Okay. <clears throat> When we begin to draw from observation, first thing we always want to do is observe what it is we're going to be drawing. So, you are going to be creating the missing half of the vase on this empty side of your box. So, before I ever draw, I want to observe the line that I have to draw. So when I look at this line, I notice that it's broken into pieces where the line changes direction and we see corners. So I like to make marks where my line changes directions or where I have corners. So this also determines the facial features that I'm drawing. So my first line is going to represent the hair, then there's a corner and I see the forehead. There's a corner and this line turns into the nose. That line goes in a new direction. That's the bottom of the nose. We see the top lip, bottom lip, chin, and then where the chin turns into the neck. So once I've made those observations, I'm now going to create guidelines. Guidelines are going to help me know how long to draw my line. So I'm going to take a tool like my ID to use to help make marks because you're not always going to have a ruler in life. So you got to use straight edges that you find around you. So I'm going to draw a line lightly across. That's going to represent where my line starts out straight and then there's a corner and that's where my line is going to go into the curve of the hair. So I'm going to try and make my ID as straight as I can and I'm just going to lightly draw that across my paper. Now I see another corner where the hair connects to the forehead. And I'm going to lightly draw that mark. I'm going to do the same thing where the forehead turns into the nose, the tip of my nose, the top of my mouth, the bottom of my mouth. This is my chin. And those guidelines are going to help me get started. Now what I'm going to look at is the distance between the end of my hair and the edge of my box. I'm going to take that ID, I'm going to set my ID on the edge of my box, and I'm going to put my finger where that line stops, right here. I'm going to hold that still and slide that over to where my finger now lines up with the edge of my box. The end of my ID is where that line should come out the farthest. And I'm going to repeat that with my forehead. Put the edge of my ID at the edge of my box. Put my finger where the line stops. Slide my ID across. So my finger's on the edge of the box and I'm going to make a mark. This is how far across my forehead should go. And I'm going to do the same thing with my nose. And then my lips. So giving myself guidelines to begin with is automatically going to set me up to be more accurate before I ever draw this line. Because now I've got placements to know where to draw my line across this paper to make it more accurate accurate. So now I'm going to make observations where I might draw an angle from the edge of my nose across to my chin. That is a diagonal line. When I draw the opposite side, I know that I need to mirror that diagonal line. So I know that my nose should be sticking out the farthest. It should stick out farther than my lips my chin and my forehead. So when I draw the missing side, I need to make sure I have the same thing. So now I'm ready to start to draw small sections at a time. When I draw, I'm going to tell myself directions. So the first line I'm drawing goes straight up and down. And I'm going to stop at that mark over on this side. So I'm going to connect, draw straight up and down. When I draw in pencil, I want to draw lightly so that when I make a mistake, I can erase it and try it again. My next line, now I'm only drawing to my next mark. This line curves down and towards the center of the box. So when I draw this, I'm going to tell myself, curve down and to the center of the box. And I'm going to stop and look at that line I just drew. 
and I want to make some observations. If that does not look accurate, I'm not going to draw any more of the line. I'm going to erase it and fix it until it does. The one thing I forgot to do was make my line touch this distance that was representing this space and this space. So I need to move my line over. So I'm going to draw that so it touches my mark. Then I'm going to erase that old line that I don't need anymore. And now I'm going to proceed the rest of the way. My line's curving down. I hit my mark and it's curving back towards the edge of my box. Now my line is curving like a slide to the center and now it's curving back to the edge of the box and then it's coming back forward to my mark. Now I have a diagonal line that goes straight backwards and now it's a curved line that comes forwards and I'm hitting this diagonal mark that I already drew. And now I'm at my chin. My chin's going to curve forward and back around. And then this is my neck that turns into a straight line. So that's all the more I'm going to drop. When I finish, I'm going to really look at this drawing and be honest with myself. Does this look like a mirror image? Does it look symmetrical? Um, if I see that I need to make improvements, I'm going to erase it and try it again. So the first thing I notice is this space is wider than this space. So I'm going to scoot this over some where I move my top lip and I'm going to erase that. Okay, when you think you have finished, I want you to raise your hand so I can check it. Um, if I agree that it looks pretty accurate, then you're going to go ahead and um, design the inside of the vase as an early finisher. Um, you can put patterns in the vase. You can shade it to look um, realistic if you imagine that vase to be made out of metal. Um, I might leave these lines I already drew and use those as a guide to build the rest of my design. And I'm going to try to keep things symmetrical. So if I add one design on one half, I'm going to do the same on the other half. And that's how you'll proceed with this assignment. Once you've got um, a design on the inside of the vase, then you can use the colored pencils and begin to add color. Um, or you could use the markers to start to add color as well. So when I grade this, I'm looking for accuracy. I'm checking to see that your vase looks symmetrical, that you showed effort in erasing and trying things again until it looks as accurate as possible. Do not draw in the empty box though on the other side. That empty box we will be using um, in the next class period where we do a similar exercise um, but the lines are going to change a little bit. So all you're doing is focusing on the first box, make it symmetrical, fill the design in, um, and then you're going to keep this in your art folder until next class when we work on the other empty box.